Installing GRP containment is straightforward and in many ways simpler than installing traditional metal systems. As always, it's a good thing first of all to check the manufacturer's instructions to ensure structural integrity and safety. Now before we get into the finer points of installation, just a reminder that if you're watching this video on any of our social media accounts, then click the link in the description to view it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and you'll receive a certificate. If you're already watching it as part of that training package, then you are the stuff of legends. Let's get into it. Handling and other best practices. GRP components are lightweight, but they're also slightly flexible, so handle long lengths carefully to avoid excessive bending that could stress the material. During installation, support long pieces at several points when lifting. Store GRP tray lengths on a flat surface or support it along their length to prevent bowing. In cold weather, GRP can be a bit stiffer. In hot weather, it's a bit more flexible, but generally, it's stable to work with in all climates. Make sure you keep proper clearances from heat sources. GRP won't conduct heat like steel containment would, but it will soften if exposed to very high temperatures like direct flame or hot exhaust pipes. And don't use GRP tray as a support for non-electrical loads beyond its design. It's meant for cables, not as pipe support or a walkway. By following the manufacturer's installation guide and normal best practices, a GRP containment system can be installed quickly and safely. The process is faster than steel tray because there's fewer fixings required and no post-cut treatments are needed, as we'll see in a moment. Cutting and drilling. One of the advantages of GRP is that it can be easily cut, drilled or fabricated on site with standard tools. Unlike steel, there's no need for heavy cutting equipment or refinishing cut edges. There's no galvanising repair or deburring required. A hacksaw or a portable bandsaw with an appropriate blade can cut GRP tray to length and holes for cables or extra fixing points can be drilled with standard drill bits. The installation guide published by Marshall Tuflex notes that no special tools are needed. Using GRP containment will allow on-site modification without the need for special tools, deburring, painting or earth bonding. So no more getting covered with zinc galvanising spray and going home looking like a bad 70s sci-fi character. However, it is really important to stress that you must take care to wear appropriate PPE because cutting GRP produces fine dust and glass fibres, so dust mask, gloves and eye protection are essential and cutting with a power tool is best done outside or using proper extraction and collection. After cutting, it's wise to wipe the cut edge to remove any loose fibres. The cut edges of GRP aren't sharp like cut metal, so the risk of injury or cable damage is lower because there's no sharp burrs left behind. Support spacings. This will vary depending on the individual product that you're installing, so it's a good idea to follow the recommended support intervals for the specific GRP product. However, it is standard practice to support GRP tray or ladder at least every 1.5 meters to prevent excessive deflection. The support brackets should be spaced out so that there's a support within 300 millimeters of each end of a tray or ladder span and within 200 mil of every joint between sections. Joining sections and thermal expansion. GRP trays and ladders can be joined in a couple of different ways and each manufacturer will have their preferred method. Marshall Tuflex's GRP tray system uses interlocking or self-aligning couplers to make assembly easier. You can see that one end of a piece of tray is molded in such a way to accept the insertion of the next piece of tray. Once the tray is aligned on the supports, you can drill a hole through both pieces of tray and fix them together using a nut and bolt. As it's likely you're going to be installing GRP cable tray in a location where the containment is going to experience harsh conditions, Marshall Tuflex recommend joining tray using stainless steel nuts and bolts to help prevent corrosion. A couple of interesting joining plates are these T-joints. They're extremely simple and compact. To join these onto a tray and create a junction, you simply cut away the side wall of the tray and join using stainless steel nuts and bolts. And this offset coupler, which allows you to change the height or depth of your containment system, and is adjustable by trimming the side piece down to length. This allows you to achieve a range of height differences with one standard size device. When connecting two trough or ladder lengths, insert the splice plate, sometimes referred to as a fish plate, and secure it with the specified bolts. Again, you'd usually use stainless steel fasteners to avoid corrosion. The manufacturer's instructions note to lock each splice plate with four bolts at the ends of fittings or tray sections for a secure connection. It's good practice to not over tighten bolts so as not to crush the fiberglass or introduce stress. GRP is tough but can be damaged by excessive point loads. You'll also need to keep in mind that while very stable in a range of temperatures, GRP has a coefficient of thermal expansion similar to plastics, which is higher than steel. So in long straight runs, you'll need to account for expansion and contraction if it is to be exposed to temperature swings. This is easily accommodated by leaving expansion gaps at joints. If the length of tray connected to the joint is over three meters long, you'd leave an expansion gap of eight millimeters or larger. And you can see that the molding at the end of a length of tray will comfortably accommodate this. If the lengths of tray are less than three meters, then the expansion gap need only be three millimeters or larger. 
fixings and accessories. It's really important to use the correct support brackets and fixings supplied or recommended by the manufacturer. Marshall Tuflex provides GRP compatible support systems made either of GRP or stainless steel. So for example, we've got these incredibly sturdy L-shaped support brackets and just in case you're wondering if a bracket that isn't made out of steel can possibly be strong enough, then the answer is emphatically yes, as I trust my entire weight to them. There's also this GRP channel available, which is absolutely rock solid as well. A little thicker in its makeup than regular steel channel, but it still can support tray in the exact same way using stainless steel channel nuts. Just make sure you get the ones with the long spring, not the short spring. And speaking of which, stainless steel 316 bolts and clamps are recommended, especially for outdoor or corrosive environments. To match the longevity of the GRP, using mild steel fixings would create a corrosion weak point. For example, when fixing a GRP ladder onto its support bracket, use hold down clamps to secure it. Typically, two clamps per support point bolted through the ladder side rail. It's also possible to add an extra layer of protection to your cables once installed via the use of lids that cover over the entire tray. This is really useful because we want our cables on the tray to have a similar lifespan to the tray and leaving some PVC sheath cables exposed to UV light could cause them to degrade over time. So if you are using these covers, make sure the covers are properly clipped on with stainless steel spring clips. Marshall Tuflex recommends about three cover clips on each side per three meter section under normal conditions placed alternately on each side of the tray. In high wind or vibration prone areas, increase this to six to seven clips per three meters to avoid any rattling or dislodging of the lid. There's also lids available to go over junctions and joints to maintain the integrity and aesthetics of the installation if you're using covers. And finally, if you want to completely enclose your containment system, then you can use these handy little caps to go over the ends of the tray. Again, just drill holes through the tray and lid where you want to locate them and you're away. In summary, installing GRP containment is a lot like installing metal tray, but you get to enjoy the simpler handling. Support it well, secure all joints and fittings with the provided couplers and supports, and use standard tools to cut and drill as needed. Always support heavy cable loads appropriately and consult Marshall Tuflex technical data or their support team for any project specific requirements. For example, very large spans or loads. When properly installed, GRP cable management will be reliable and virtually maintenance free over its service life of 25 years plus. So that brings us to the end of this series on GRP containment. If you're watching on our training platform, then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and you'll receive your certificate for your CPD records. If you're watching on one of our social media platforms, then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate or click this video right here to see some awesome products and content from Marshall Tuflex. All that remains in this series of videos is to say thank you very much for watching.